everybody, and welcome back to the Farming Simulator 25 Tips and Tricks video. Today we're going to be talking about landscaping, placing of trees, painting of ground textures, and painting of plants and shrubbery. In a recent video, we also did a deep dive into the rest of build mode, where we constructed out several sheds, as well as the plethora of fence and gate options that are included in the game as well as talked about the various greenhouses, farmhouses, and more. Well, this is somewhat a continuation of that video with respect to the last tab of build mode. And that is gonna be where we really mess with landscaping, again, placing of the trees and ground textures, as well as painting grass and shrubbery. So we're gonna get into build mode with left shift P, and we have our sheds, animals, factories, we have our fences, lights, and others, and then we have our sculpting, painting, trees, and plants, and that's where we're going to spend today. With respect to sculpting, we have four different tools. We have raise and lower, level, soften, and slope, and all of these have a cost associated with them. Whenever we're modifying the ground, there will be a cost associated with it, so be sure you have enough money in your bank account. All of these tools have some general controls as well. In all four tools, we can change the brush size with B from square to round. We can change the intensity with K and L, where K lowers and L increases the intensity. You can see they're represented by the color of the circle there. And then we can change the bus size with N and M. M will make it larger, N will make it smaller. Overall, my advice to you is to be very, very careful with respect to intensity. You don't want to do too much too fast because it can get out of hand pretty quick and there is no undo. So the other advice is to save frequently, but not so frequently that you end up digging yourself almost into a literal hole. Also, if you're on mouse, you can center button, center mouse, and then you up and down will tilt and rotate your camera view so that you're not stuck like in a specific look. You can also use WASD to move the camera around as well. So let's talk about raise and lower. Left click is going to raise the ground. Right click is going to lower the ground. So obviously with that combination, you can do all kinds of things. Like if you wanted to dig a hole that maybe you were going to then use in a later mode in order to, well, who knows what you want to do with it. Maybe someday we'll have placeable water planes like we did in FS22, and you're basically going to be able to make yourself a little bit of a pond, right? We made a, a small hole, and now we're going to make a rise here. Might increase the intensity just a hair. And you can see in doing that, the speed at which the ground changes increases significantly. You want to keep the cursor moving, you can get in real trouble if you let the cursor just stay in a specific spot for too terrible long. So the overall advice I'm going to give you is to keep that brush moving. You may think to yourself, well, that is just a horrible, horrible mess. What on earth can you do with that? Well, yes, this does look like a horrible, horrible mess, but it is not something that can't be completely recovered from. We come over here to soften. So soften is going to do exactly what the name implies. It's going to smooth out the rust spots. It's going to raise the low areas, lower the high areas, and fill in the gaps. So we're gonna end up, when we're done, 
with a relatively smooth mound from that monstrosity of a hilly area. Same can be said with respect to our hull. Now it did knock it down quite a bit. It did bring it up quite a bit, but it's clearly still obviously a depression in the ground where this is still clearly obviously a change in elevation for the positive. We then have level. Okay, level is going to do just that. It's going to take the height of one area and make the rest of the area that you brush that height. So, for example, if we take and left click over here and hold the mouse button down, everywhere that we move, it's going to raise that terrain up or lower that terrain until it is at that initial height. So you can see, we clicked here, right? So everything has been made level to this. So this ground over here is higher than there. This ground over here is lower than there, so it's bringing it up. So it's lowering ground, it's raising ground, but in theory, this entire area is completely flat compared to the rest of this area, which maybe appeared flat, but clearly it has a subtle slope to it. Now we can somewhat fix all that by coming back here to soften and softening all this up to the point where it's almost completely unnoticeable to the eye. Right? It's almost completely unnoticeable that we did anything here with respect to build a hole, level it, and then smooth it back out. We still have this slope or mound. All right. Well, we're going to use this because we're going to build a ramp. We're going to build an incline. We're going to basically take this as our high point and we're going to raise the ground up around it to this high point via the slope tool. So the way the slope tool works is we're going to right click on our target height, our target of our slope. So we're going to right click. And now that we've done that, we've set this as the height. And then the game is going to go from, let's say here, and it's going to create a slope up to that point. Nice, even slope from our target, which was up here, to anywhere that we click. So we click way over here. Areas that are higher are going to be dropped down. Areas that are lower are going to be raised. And that can help us also basically create an effect, right? And then we may decide, ah, oh, I just completely have made a mess of everything. I don't like any of this, right? Remember, we always have our level. So let's right click or let's just left click here and just smash it all back down.
But remember, we have a subtle slope on this field. So let's come back here to our slope and we're going to right click. We're going to put our subtle slope back. We're going to soften. Smash everything back down. And when we're all said and done, we spent a whole lot of money to get back to a point where it looks as if we haven't done nearly a darn thing. But that's basically the gist between the four tools. Raise and lower, level, soften, and slope. And through the combination of those four tools, there's a lot of things that a talented person could accomplish. Am I that talented person? No. So I try to do very, very little changing to the train overall, but I do know that I can, if need be, make some subtle changes. And if things go awry, I can use these four tools to hopefully get back to a, a modest point where it doesn't look like I've made a complete disaster of the area. Now with respect to painting of ground textures, we have several ground textures available to us in build mode. And I've gone ahead and put those down here. I'm just going to use a flashlight a little bit just to show some things off. But we have mud. We have asphalt, I believe. Concrete. Dirt. We have different forms of grass round texture gravel we have kind of a stone with moss we have cobblestone and then we have some pavers so in the painting pool each of these is going to cost two dollars in order to put down we once again we have different brush sizes m and n and we have different brush shapes. We have square and round. So the easy way to paint this is we're just going to left click. And we just, you know, paint it around. There we go. So animal mud. Asphalt. Concrete. And if we wanted to, we can make our brush smaller here. And we can just dabble. A little bit of animal mud in here and a little bit of asphalt to kind of blend things in a little bit. We have our dirt, which this whole field has been made into dirt. Forest ground, grass, gravel, rock, cobblestone, pavers. It's labeled as flagstone here. Now trees. I've tried to do something here with the trees. And, well, all good intentions ultimately fail at some point. Most of these trees have five, sometimes six, sometimes less sizes. From little, little baby saplings to giant, enormous trees. So just like our painting of our ground textures, just like our working the train of being able to change sizes, we can change the tree sizes at the same time within build mode. One thing I want to do after or toward the end of this video is fast forward time because I'm a little curious as to if these trees grow it all I just don't know I'm a little curious to find out so let's come back here and look at our trees here's all the trees we can place in the game all the various sizes of the trees 
and as I said, all good intentions went out the door when I realized that I wasn't spacing these trees out nearly well enough that they didn't all look like they're smashed together. So we have an old American elm. And we start out with the largest size tree. We can change that with M and N. Either will cycle us all the way through, it's just which direction we go at the start. N will typically make it smaller, M will make it bigger, but again, they all wrap around. We can place the tree just by left clicking it. We can right click and move left and right to rotate the tree. Ideally, when you place the tree, you don't want to place the next one and not do some level of rotation just to have some ver variety. Well, in FS25, we have the ability to rotate randomly with B. So we can place a tree, B, place another tree, place another tree, and every time we place a tree, we can hit B, and it's going to rotate the tree randomly, and ultimately at the end of the day, it's going to give it an aesthetic that we wouldn't get if we didn't actually have rotated the trees to begin with. Right, so we have different shapes of the American elm. One, two, three, four, five, six different shapes of the elm tree. We have an old aspen tree. Right, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different sizes of the aspen tree. And note each size is the same amount of money. So that's gonna be for all of these trees. Each tree replace is the same amount of money. An old beech tree, 140 bucks. It's darn cheap, right? So here's the different sizes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have a large, yeah, I don't know how you pronounce this one. We have one, two, three, four, five different sizes of that tree. We have the large box elder. A huge trunk on that thing. One, two, three, four sizes for that one. We have a large cherry tree. One, two, three, four sizes for the cherry tree. Large Chinese elm, one, two, three, four, five sizes for it. Our service berry, one, two, three, four sizes for it. Large golden rain, one, two, three, four, five. These trees for the most part are not good for forestry unless you were going to use them for wood chips because of the fact that they don't have a nice, long, slender trunk. That's gonna change with the next one. So we have a large Japanese tree. One, two, three, four, five versions of that one. We have our large lodge pole pine, 2,700 bucks. So this one, yeah, this would be a good tree for your forestry. One, two, three, four different sizes of it. The northern hat cattle. Yeah, all right, whatever. One huge trunk on that one. One, two, three, four, five. Scotch pine. One, two, three, four, five, six. Red pine. One, two, three, four, five as well. Our old oak, one, two, three, four, five, six. Our hickory, one, two, three, four, five. And then our, yeah, our, our whatever this is, $500. One, two, one, two, three, four, five different sizes of that one. Now, as far as plants go, paintable plants. Paintable 
foliage. We have meadow. Three different sizes of meadow. So three different heights of paintable meadow grass. One height there. One height here. And one height here. Now this meadow grass will grow. We're just painting in what size we want to start with. And if we combine our grass brown texture, notice that it removes the foliage when we do this, but if we put down our grass ground texture and then put down our grass foliage, right? It looks a lot better than if we just put foliage over dirt. So this is where we start layering things together. You want to remove it, right click, and we move our foliage left click to apply it. Then we have bushes. Now be cautious with bushes and your brush shape or brush size. We want to put one bush down. We can do that just by single clicking. You want to put a row of bushes down. We hold the button down, move the cursor around and we put a whole big patch of bushes. Right click to remove them, right? We want to increase our brush size. Left click and we just put a whole big bunch of bushes in. Okay. So these bushes, they really aren't named that uniquely, but they're all either a different size or just general different type. But the overall gist to remember is as we place these, the smaller the brush size, the less number of bushes get placed at any one time. We click and drag. We're going to be able to paint a row of bushes. And at any point in time, we can right click to remove the bush or the grass. So here we have our different meadow grasses. And our different bushes. And of course, right now the game is in October. So we're seeing some fall colors on these bushes. And through the combination of all of these tools, great things can be made. So with this, I leave you all with the power to really get creative and to build out your own and unique areas. If you're done, that's fine. If you want to stick around and find out my results with respect to if these trees grow or not, then stick around. I'm going to have to fast forward through probably two game years, which is going to take quite a bit of time. Then I'll come back at the end and tell you and probably show you my results. What has been a mere few moments for you? It's been a few hours for me. Such is life. But at any rate, I've advanced two years and one month from where we were last together. And I can say that these placed trees have not grown at all. So I feel extremely confident in saying that placed trees do not grow. Regardless of the size that they are placed in, they are here forever in this size. Unlike planted trees, which definitely grow. And planted trees, I've seen grow at least one stage every year. Now, trees where we've seen that had, let's say six different sizes, they may take six game years to grow to full size, 
but they do grow and they do move along fairly rapidly as compared to real trees. But these placed trees, no, they don't move at all. So if you place a small tree, it's likely permanently going to be that size. So guys, I hope this has been helpful and useful in some way. If it is, please go ahead and click that like button. Let me know down in the comments below what you think of the new landscaping features, the sculpting features, the way that they have now sorted the trees by type, and then you can cycle between the different sizes in the build mode, and how they have now done their placed or painted shrubbery and other foliage layers. It's a bit different than it was in Farm Sim 22, but again, such is life. Change is inevitable. It's all about how we accommodate said change. And until next time, happy farming.